<laughs> Thank goodness, we just had a total failure, I'm afraid. And um, so I'm going to have to do some messing about to get it back. Um, I thought I was live and it told me I wasn't. So apparently now I'm live. So hang on while we just get the screen share going properly for us, which we might succeed in doing in just a moment because we actually need the screen share to do this properly. So there we go. I think we're sharing. So is there anybody out there can see this, can check me and that I'm actually here and talking to people and that the sharing is going up? Yeah, I seem to be there. So let's try again <laughs> and see if we can't make this work this time. Always this teething trouble stuff. Now we're going to talk about the Earth's sun. Hi, Paula. Yes, thank God you're there. Thank God somebody's telling me that I'm here and that I'm actually live. <laughs> Let's see where we're going. We're going with the Earth's sun. It's the basic meditation that underlies all our work in the old ways. Everything comes from this. Everything in the future, including the Rainbow Warriors thing after the apprenticeship, and you'll find everything stems from the Earth's sun. And you may have already done this a bit. Um, it's available to you, just an easy little version, on the Etrolls tribe. It's the first of the silver courses. But I want now to talk a bit more about why, what it is, what it's about, what's actually going on, and what we actually know we're doing. Because there's a lot of knowing in our world. A lot of knowing in the old ways in our world. So, here we are. Beautiful picture of the sun coming up over the edge of the earth. The two of them together. Remember that. That's really important. So, let's move on and see where we get to in the next one. Like I said, it's the meditation that underlies everything. All of our old ways in Britain. And it's the beginning for us all, where we all begin. I remember beginning as a little child and Daddy talking me through this. I lost my mum when I was three and a half, so it was Dad who taught me through most of this. And him talking me through this as he put me to bed in the morning, uh, in the evening, <laughs> not usually in the morning. And I remember it even from then. And as I worked with it more, I got used to it and I got more what's going on. So modern life, as I'm sure you know, is it's really disconnected us. We are no longer connected in the cosmos that we actually live in. We're not connected to the solar system, most of us. It's out there, those planets, you can see them sort of if you know where to look in the sky at night. And the sun, well, it keeps shining, doesn't it? And, you know, it's a nice hot day today, so it's all right, isn't it? And we don't even really connect with our own earth. Now, that's really sad. And an awful lot of the modern TV programs, are, you know, sort of beastly earth or ferocious earth or killer earth or whatever and you know they're telling us how the, she's at us with a volcano or she's at us with a storm or she's going to kill us with a tsunami and it's all about fight 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 that's not how we live and it's not why we live and it's not what this meditation is about this meditation is about this about bringing it together about reconnecting us to the earth and to the sun. We're going to do it in a little bit, but we're going to talk about it first, okay? So Mother Earth and Father Sun are our way back to reconnection. They're our way to come back, to get back to being reconnected. And as we reconnect with them, so we begin to reconnect with ourselves just our personal selves, that Ellen or Paul or Fred or whoever we are that we know, but also with our spirit self, and it helps us reconnect that too. 
That's why it's the beginning of all our work. So we're going to reconnect ourselves with Mother Earth and with Father Son. And I really like this picture, the sun coming up over the earth and surrounded by clouds. Now, that's an artist's impression. You can't go out to space and see it looking like that. It doesn't. But I like the feel that that picture gives, and that's why I use it. Okay. So let's move along and see what happens next. Well, we're going to start with Father Son, which is unusual. We normally start with Mother Earth, but in this talk, we're going to start with Father Son. Because Father Son enables so much, and most of us don't realise it. We're probably better off knowing what Mother Earth enables for us and helps us to be with. But Father Son less so. The sun enables the air we breathe. Because of the heat and the energy that we get from the sun, that's how we get air. And the same how we get water. And I mean, part of the air, in a very simple way, is we get oxygen through photosynthesis of plants. And the plants do this totally incredible operation of creating oxygen, more oxygen for us, by just using sunlight and water and the minerals in the soil. But it's sunlight and water, the water in their leaves, and the way their leaves work, and they're able to take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. And that wouldn't happen if there was no sun. And because of the sun, it enables hydrogen and oxygen to combine together to make water. It's that energy, that heat, we're going to talk a lot about energy in this one. Energy and heat and that makes it happen. And because of those things, the air and the water, the plants thrive. And if the plants are thriving, then all the animals can thrive, and we're animals too, so we can thrive. And it's only again because of the sun, and of course because of the earth. But the sun, was, the earth were on her own can't do it, but neither can the sun. Remember that, that's important. And because of all this, our bodies grow and our minds flourish, and our spirits are filled with joy. I mean, this picture here, that's actually dawn from my kitchen window. That's what it looks like. And it's this wonderful lighting of the darkness, lighting of the tree and the sky, and coming over the top to light the earth beneath. And that, I get up early. I'm an early bird anyway. But I get up early, and that means... I see this and I get this joy. In the evening, we also get superb sunsets here about from my house. And I've only got to walk 100 yards up the lane and there I am and I'm facing this amazing, fantastic sunset sky. Even with clouds, even with rain. You can watch it, even when it's not good weather. It's still amazing. And that's the light and the joy of the sun. And without the warmth and the light and the energy, Earth could not be alive. She is dependent on him. But he can't produce all this stuff that he wishes to produce without her. Again, remember that. So we're all brought to life by the sun. And we are all actually children of the cosmos. So we need to remember, and doing the earth sun helps us remember. It's one of the ways. So where do we go on from here? Well, what does Mother Earth enable for us? Oh, where do I stop? Where do I start? So, so much. I mean, we could not live without her. 
I mean, apart from anything else, she gives us gravity, which sticks us to her, sticks our feet down to the ground. Otherwise, poof, we'd all be everywhere. She gives us shelter. She gives us food. And she gives us the joy of diversity because there are so many different species of animals and plants. There are so many different humans. There are so many different everything. There are so many different pebbles on the beach even, drops of water in the sea or in your glass. And she gives us all of that. And so she too gives us joy. Maybe a little of a different sort of joy, although remember the last picture that it was the earth and the sun together that were doing this amazing sunrise and would do an amazing sunset. So she gives us incredible joy. Now she also gives us sadness. And quite often people now say, oh, but I don't want sadness. I don't want to be sad. I just want to be happy. <clears throat> Sorry, get real. You're gonna get both. If you want one, you have to have the other. Now that's another thing to remember. And remember that the sun can't do it on its own and the earth can't do it on her eye, no. We have to have both. So you have to have joy, but you have to have sadness if you're going to have joy. And you have to have joy if you're going to have sadness. Because it's never all one. And Mother Earth teaches us that. I get sadness every day watching the total mess our poor lady is in and the trees coming down and the animals being hurt all of this sort of thing quite apart from human tragedies i expect many of you do too now the earth also gives us safety uh, i mentioned a little bit of safety right at the beginning gravity without gravity bing, we, we were anywhere and we'd actually blow up um, our bodies wouldn't hold together without gravity. They need this compression. And because of her mass, how big she is, and because of her spin, the two together give us energy and gravity. And they enable us to stick to the, stick to the ground. They nail our feet to the perch, to quote Monty Python. <laughs> and so we don't actually float off. We actually are here. We do have to learn to be here mentally and be present as well as just physically having our feet stuck to the ground. But she gives us the safety in which we can actually learn that. And she gives us excitement. I mean, I don't know about you, but I do find every day has an excitement in it. It may have some frustrations and some times when I'm tearing my hair out and screaming at things and all that kind of thing. But that happens to everybody, doesn't it? I think so. And amongst all of that is the excitement. I mean, even with the frustrations, and you cannot get this thing to do this thing just as you want it to do, and then it does. And you go, hey, I've done it. So even the frustrations can bring you an excitement. And you have that because you are here, because you are part of Mother Earth, you are working with her. So she's our cauldron cradle. She enables us to be. And without her, we would have nowhere to be. So where are we moving from there? Well, I like this picture. It's, to me, it's beautiful. There we have Father Son dancing, very beautiful too. And he's gloriously twisting and beautiful and dancing and holding the ball out to her, holding the sun ball out, maybe even sending it. We'll look at that in a minute. And she is there holding the earth ball up to him. Maybe they play with it between the two. And they dance together. They beautifully dance together. And they really physically do this. You know, there is the sun and we go around the sun. Very simple. And that going around the sun gives us all our seasons. It gives us our 
different times of day, well, uh, different times of day come um, from her rotation, but we get more light in the summer and less light in the winter, except we're on the, the equator, and then it's all the same. But the dance together gives us so, so much and is so beautiful. And once we understand that they're dancing together, we can actually start to work with them. And the Earth Center exercise is about learning this dance with them and about dancing this dance with them. So let's go and look at that in a very different way, and one you might not have done before, but it's fun. Whoa, what's that? I don't know whether any of you have seen that ever before. It's, it's a um, stylized impression of the sun. And there's the earth, tiny little earth in there. And all these waves coming out around the earth and from her in both directions. So, and this like exchange going on between them, which it does. Now, these waves, he's sending out to her their energy they're what's called electromagnetic energy and i'm not going into what that is if you want to know you can go and look it up yourself um because it's far too complicated and not quite relevant to this but the fact that it's energy is very relevant he's sending her energy and she's sending energy back and his energy is coming round her and making things happen, and she's traying it off a great fishtail after, but she's also pushing out energy this way as well. It's actually all of this that you can actually see this if you go to the North or South Pole or near them, because those are the aurora, the aurora borealis for us up here, and australis for them down there. And this is all these wonderful moving curtains of light, and that is the electromagnetic energy that dances. Now, one of our goddesses, Ariane is deeply into that, and we'll talk about that in another webinar, but it's worth remembering. So the dance is about energy. Now, as some of you know, I'm married to a particle physicist, well, he's an ex-particle physicist now, because he's old and retired. Um, and I've had this kind of stuff with the cornflakes every morning for 47 years now. So you either sort of leave hurriedly, which I didn't, or you stay and you enjoy it. And I'm lucky because he's a he's the sort of bloke who doesn't have to talk to you in about science in mathematical theorems and long words and great big equations and all that kind of stuff. He can actually do it pretty well in the cat sat on the mat. So I actually learned something. Very useful people like that. And he's always been into this kind of work too, because his father was, and his mother to some extent, but mostly his father. And so he taught him a lot of things when he was a child too. And the difference between energy and spirit, I don't think there is one. I think the only difference is in language. And science will talk about it as electromagnetic waves, for instance, or light waves or photons or something. And we will talk about it as spirit or maybe healing energy or growing energy or energy that's helping to protect us in some way. <clears throat> I remind you of that at all. Yeah? Hmm. Worth thinking about. So energy is spirit. Spirit is energy. I was fortunate back in 2017 to go to a place called Cullum, which is the um, British Centre for Nuclear Fusion, not fission, fusion, i.e. making energy, trying to do what the sun does and make energy so that we can get all the energy we need out of three egg cupfuls of seawater, which is what they can now do. They're now building power stations that can do this. You won't hear much about it because it's, you know, it's not horrible and death and dreadful and all the rest of the sort of thing. But it's there if you like to look for it. Anyway, so I was there and 
fascinating. No, I can't do the maths, but they're talking mostly in concepts. And I can get the concepts. And if I didn't, they're the sort of people, like my husband, I could go on and say, what did you say? And they would explain it. And they ended up talking. We had talked quite a lot. And I said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, you're probably all going to laugh, but I, 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 I work magic. I'm sort of a shaman kind of thing. And they're, oh, really? What's that about? We really don't know. And we were there, yeah, 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 over the coffee. And they kept saying, hey, you know, we talk about like that in quantum. And I said, I thought you did. And then they'd tell me something quantum and I'd sort of say, well, that sounds like what we do. And give them a practice. So when you get the real guys, I mean, these are the guys who are at the cutting edge of their profession. And when you get these sort of guys, they're saying, yeah, we're talking about the same thing in different language and looking at it from a different perspective. Fine. But energy is spirit. And we go back to one of the fathers of <clears throat> modern physics at all, Einstein. And this is a real shrink down of what he said. And what he actually is a shrink down actually of his famous equation E equals MC squared, that matter is compressed energy. And I was talking about this the other day. All the atoms in this pen are actually moving. <clears throat> But compared to the atoms in the sun or in electromagnetic magnetic energy or in the light bulb up there or even just whizzing around me, they're going really slowly. They're still going very fast as far as I'm concerned. But they're all moving. This is just energy that has been compressed and formed and held into the shape of a pen so that I can use it. So... I'm energy. I am. I'm formed. I hold together fairly well. Perhaps, well, different circumstances. I hold together pretty well. So do you. So does your laptop or whatever you're looking at this on. So does the table that it might be sitting on. So it's the chair that you might be sitting on. It's all energy that is compressed. So everything is energy. Going at different speeds, in different manner and becoming different things. This is what we say. All life is connected. All life is spirit. We are children of the cosmos. We are energy children. We are. So we are both compressed energy, matter, and going terribly fast energy, spirit, at the same time. And an awful lot of courses nowadays, they say, Oh, well, you come and be a shaman for the weekend and then you can go back to being an accountant all week. No, you can't. <laughs> You're both. You're always an accountant at some point, assuming you are. And you are always a shaman as in, at some level, assuming you are. You're always an energy worker and you're always a pen pusher. You don't stop one, put it away in the cupboard, Take out the other one and become that one. You're always part of the same thing. That's connection too. Now, the Earth Sun helps you to learn that, helps you to realize that you are both at once, that you are spirit and that you are matter, just like these. Because standing on the Earth, she definitely feels quite solid to me. <laughs> so where are we going next? Okay. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry, I've got a, an ache in my neck. Um, more glorious pictures. This is actually a picture from Hubble of what is known as the Hourglass gal Galaxy. I think it's utterly stunning. There it is. There it is. And this wonderful formation like an eye in the center of it. And since I first saw this, which must be a hell of a long time ago now, because Hubble's gone even. He had his life and given us all his pictures, and now he's just floating off out into space. So here's a, 
a long time ago I first saw this and I just went, oh yes, that's it. And I've been using it ever since. And it's actually very good for this whole idea of connecting with Mother Earth and connecting with Father Son. So, you can only make this reconnection when you want to, when you choose to do so. No one in other world, in the spirit world, in the energy world, none of them will ever stuff it in your face and make you do it. You choose. And you can say, no, I don't want to do it. You can turn away. Frankly, I think it would be very boring to turn away, but that is always a choice that you have. And this connection is one our ancestors knew. And they knew it in their bones. And those of us who work this way, we know it in our bones too. And it's there all the time. And once you've learned it, you do it all the time. Like even before I sat down to join you all here, it was like, Quicker, son. Right. Thank you, guys. Be with me. Look after me. Let's go. It works. So you connect with Mother Earth and you connect with Father Son and your journey with them, and it's actually with them, you're working with them, comes out like a figure of eight. You'll feel it like a figure of eight. And this figure of eight, which is otherwise known as a lemniscate, and you turn it on its side more than if it's that, but it's a sort of forever symbol. It's a going on and on and on forever. It never stops. It never stops. And that's how it will be as you practice Earth Sun more and more. And you are this I at the center. You're not just I, that letter, you're I that sees. Because remaking these threads help you to see more. The whole perspective gets broader and deeper and wider and higher, everything. And you are this I at the center. You stand at the center and you allow the energy threads to pass you through you reconnecting earth to sun and sun to earth earth to sun and earth, sun to earth and they do it through you and you actually choosing to be the filament the connector between them really helps them too it amplifies their energy and it amplifies it for you so despite the fact that many of us think the human, human race was a mistake we're actually important. What we need is to learn to stop being a mistake and start being the solution. But we all know that one too. It's much easier to say than to do. But the Earth Sun will help you on the way to doing it and being it. So let's move on to the next place. Okay, we're going to have an amazing picture in a minute. But first of all, this is the Earth Sun in really simple, okay? It's really, really simple. So if you want to do it with me now, let's make yourself comfortable. Don't mind sitting, standing, however you are. And feel the energy in your heart. And imagine yourself sending a thread down from your heart, through the earth, through the earth's crust, down through the rocks, down through the molten rocks, down to the very heart of the earth. And find yourself there, however it appears to you. Many people see it, see it as a beautiful, dark and bright cave. You're in her heart. And you see a spark, and it comes towards you. 
So feel that spark coming towards you and welcome it in. Welcome the spark into yourself. This is the spark, the heart of Mother Earth. Let the two of you twine together, play together, be for a moment with Mother Earth. Let us just be for a moment with Mother Earth. And now, Mother Earth says to you, come, let us go and visit Father Sun. And she takes you, your thread and her thread, goes back up through the earth, up through you, up your spine, out of the top of your head. And out together you go across space, across the dark velvet, star strangled black velvet of space and you go to the sun beautiful golden orange fiery sun and you dive right in right inside right through to the very heart of the sun and there again you find yourself in a bright and dark cave and there is a spark and the spark comes towards you both and you welcome it and it comes within you and there you have earth spark and sun spark and you spark all twining and playing together there in the heart of the sun beautiful glorious and then Sunspark says, come, let's go back down and go to the heart of the earth again. So the three of you now go out following your threads down through space, through the atmosphere, down through the top of your head and down your spine and down into the earth and through the rocks and down into the heart of Mother Earth. And there the three of you play again together, getting to know each other. And after a little while, the three of you go up the threads, the triple threads, and play in the heart of the sun again. And then again, you come down the threads. All three of you sit down the triple threads to the heart of the earth and play again. Up and down, down and up. You pulse together, the three of you. And after a little while, when you feel ready, you say, it's time for me to go home. And so the sun spark goes home to the sun and you feel just the thread in the very background of your consciousness. And the earth spark withdraws into the background of your consciousness and you travel back up your own thread, which still has the echoes with the other two within it. You travel back up your thread to your heart 
And there you feel yourself at home again, in your own heart. But with the added experience that now you can share with Mother Earth and Father Son. And so, there you are, back in your heart, back in the everyday world, and back here. This picture, this little video, is actually a fusion happening, filmed in the UK, in Cullen, where I was. Can never go in there. It's too fierce, far too fierce for us. But they know how to watch it and how to film it. Here it comes. Threads meeting. The spark happening. And growing, flickering. And coming to life. Lighting and lighting and lighting and lighting until And that is what happens in your heart. That is what happens when you do the Earth Sun. That is what you enable between Earth and Sun. <sighs> and you make that sparking energy, and you make it and you remake it every time you do the Earth Sun. And you come together the goddess and her guardian god, the goddess and her guardian deer, the roe deer, our native species here. And by being part of them, you help both earth and sun, as you help yourself by making this reconnection, this reconnection which goes right out from your heart, your little heart, as big as my fist, out, earth and sun, through the solar system, through the galaxy, through the cosmos itself. You're making it, you're becoming part of this and becoming part of everything. And our ancestors knew this. They knew this in, our, in their bones. And now it's time for us to relearn too. This, that, is the beginning of ancestral wisdom. And the earth sun begins your feet on the path to ancestral wisdom. And that takes you out into the brightness and back into the darkness of the womb, the cauldron as well. This is a two-way path, not one. Remember, And so there we are, everybody. My first little masterclass webinar about the Earth and Sun, and I hope you enjoyed it. And you can find out lots more about others that I'm doing. Um, and some of them are much longer and they won't be free. But I will probably be doing some more free ones, but not quite yet. But you can find them here. Um, I've got a new website for the masterclasses because 
poor deer troughs was just getting overcrowded. <laughs> Not that I'm deserting deer troughs by any manner. But this one is particularly for this kind of work where you want to go further. And so please contact me there. Please contact me here through um, Wise Woman. Um, I'm always there on messages. And so, and it's probably one of the best ways of catching me. So it would be absolutely lovely to see you there. Now, if anybody's got questions, I'm going to get rid of the screen share now. And if I can remember how to do it, which I probably can't. And I don't want to do it anymore. So how do I do this? How do I get rid of the screen share? I can't remember. Um, no, I don't want to do that. I want to undo screen share. And can I see how to undo screen share? I can't. So we're just going to have to go with it because <laughs> I'm not going to play with that now. So if anybody's got any questions, put them up. If you want to brew with questions, because quite often that's a very good way to do it rather than questions that leap out of you at the moment, please do. And please contact me on Messenger or add to this post. It'll be up on Wise Woman, although there will be new ones coming now and it won't be pinned to the top anymore. Um, please get in touch. And I've nearly finished this new website. So you should be able, you should be able to join other bigger, longer masterclasses where there's much more chance for you to do interactive work with me than there was today. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you and to working with you. So is there anybody there with any qu more questions out there? Or shall we pack up and put the kettle on? Do, do come in if you want to. Absolutely great. All day, Anne. Um, do it morning and evening. And um, it's very good to do it when you go to bed because it helps you actually remember your dreams and realise and become more conscious of dreaming and conscious dreaming as well. But I do it, like I said at the beginning of this, before I came in, or as I came in, before I actually turned you all on and turned this on, I just did a very quick Earth Sun. I've been doing it for so long now, it's there all the time. I just click straight into it. It takes practice, you've got to keep doing it. So use it for anything. So do it morning and evening, Anne, and any other time you feel like it during the day. Any time you feel nervous, any time you feel worried, just get there. But do it morning and evening to get it into your bones. Because there's a lovely twilight time. So that's the sun coming up and the sun going down. So it's when they kiss. When sun and earth kiss. Always a good time to do things in a kiss. Anybody else? More questions? Anybody got anything? Very happy if you want. Would you say more about this meditation and connecting to the wheel? No, Patty. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes, I'll talk more about it. But it doesn't connect to the wheel in the way that I think you mean. So I may have got you wrong. You can do this at any time. Uh, it connects to the wheel in the sense of the seasons and connects to the four sun feasts, the two solstices and the two equinoxes, but it's not those. This is a connection that's happening all the time. Photosynthesis doesn't just happen at one season, it happens all the time. As long as the sun's on a plant, it's happening. So oxygen is being made, water is being made. So the sun and the earth are always working together. Always, always, always. And our connection is to get back into that rhythm of working always with them all the time. And then we add in the other colors of the season but we're always doing the earth sun, beginning of every 
ritual that I do for any of the seasons or for a person or if I'm doing um, a healing or anything like that, I begin with the earth sun and I finish with the earth sun just to make sure my connection is stable. Does that help, Patty? I hope so. Anybody else? Oh, Patty and everybody. This is, the Earth Sun is not only connected with this one webinar. It's connected with all of the masterclass webinars that I do. And we will be doing it in every single one, including numerology, which you may not normally think of as being necessary, but it is. So it connects everything with everything. It connects you rather with everything and everything to you because it's humans. Thanks, Patty, I'm glad it worked. It's humans who turn the switch off. Plants don't turn the connection switch off. Animals don't turn the connection switch off. Rocks don't turn the connection switch off. Switch off. Only us who go, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing that. And I'm separate. Yeah. We have to stop being separate and know that we're always part of everything. I make sure we keep our connection to everything. I'm going to do quite a lot of work with working with animals over probably next year. And there you will really see how important being connected is and how it helps you to be present so that you can understand what they have been telling you for years. Okay. Any more for any more. Well, I think it is time to wind up. So thank you all for being there. Thank you for listening, for watching everybody. And this is going to be up so you can watch it again. And I shall put it on YouTube so you can all get there and watch it again. It's on my Wise Woman YouTube channel. And I'll make sure that that goes in the notes, the comments on this post. In fact, I'll probably put it on the top, edit the top post of the post and make sure it goes in there when it's up. And that will probably be tomorrow because I don't think I shall do it tonight, but I might. And I look forward to seeing you on webinars and masterclasses in the future. So take care, everybody. And I'll be back for Wise Woman Live anyway next Monday. And I'll be having another little wee webinar again fairly soon. But I'll make sure it's up on the Facebook page so you can all find it. Take care everybody, lovely to be with you and see you again.